Hi, I'm Kat Johnson, and I'm here with my friend Kaya Lindsay, who's a bit of a van life superstar. Thanks for being here, Kaya. Thanks, Kat. Thanks for having me on. So I've known you for some years now, and I yeah. remember probably two, three years ago, I heard you in Next Space talking about getting a sprinter van, making plans. Will you tell me a little bit about that time and what was going on for you then? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so this whole thing started for me um, around the time that I was finishing up my degree. I have a degree in community education from Goddard College. And um, for my senior project, they were having us do something and I decided I was gonna build out uh, a Sprinter van as a tiny home. Um, as my final project, I was going to talk about, you know, the concept of what is home and that was really interesting to me and um, You know to be honest I Was really looking forward to living in a van and traveling full-time because I couldn't afford a place in Santa Cruz mm -hmm. So that your build out which is something I want to get into but that was part of a project you were working mm -hmm. on part of a school project mm -hmm. and then what's happened since then is you've been really generous with showing people how to do their build outs, how to convert a sprinter van, how to do van life, the really beautiful parts of it, and also the ugly and crazy parts of it. Yeah. Um, I, so what's happened in that time since then that you, you started the van life and then here you are, has it been a few years? Uh, it will be two years on June 28th. That's my two year anniversary. So I'm really coming up on it. So yeah, go ahead. So yeah, no, um, so the projects, like showing people how it started, um, or showing people what I was doing, started out as part of my senior thesis project. It was like, okay, so, because I needed to document what I was doing and like explain the process, because like here, if you can show someone how you're doing something, then it means you've learned something. Um, and so it started out as just like a school project, and then people started getting a lot out of it. And you know, I remember the first time that I got like, 37,000 views on a video, I was like, oh my gosh, wow, people are really interested to see this. Um, and I had been recording the whole time doing little time-lapse videos of each section. I don't know if you've seen that one video, but um, when, it, when it was finally finished, I had basically a start to finish in like 11 minutes, um, fast, uh, what is it called, time-lapse video of the Sprinter Van build-out. And it has something like 1.3 million views now. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, so this is something that people are really, really interested in. Um, and since then, it became something that I became really passionate about. So I started like doing more videos on what's it like living in a van for me and like, you know, how do I stay clean? Where do I go to the bathroom? How do I make money? Uh, just because people are like, how did you do this thing? And it's been, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, the van life thing is definitely going off right now. And it's interesting, when I moved to Santa Cruz, there were a lot of people who hung out at Lighthouse Field and lived in vans. And mm -hmm. my partner and I had a van and, you know, we would take it on long trips and stuff. But now it's like, that was, no one had turned, heard the phrase van life before. Yeah. So I'm curious, I'd love to get your take on what's behind this kind of momentum. Maybe it's housing crunches, maybe it's housing prices, maybe it's just wanting more freedom, but this whole kind of trend of, of van life. Man, that is a really loaded question. Like, I, I don't think we have time to get into the whole <laughs> thing right now, because I mean, there's like socioeconomic factors and trending factors and social media and, you know, people's priorities and minimalism being emphasized yeah, more in, right. in the younger community and you know just there's a lot of going into that but um, if I could distill it all down into like a few sentences I would say that I think there is a desire for uh, a sustainable level of freedom in a generation that doesn't have a lot of access to housing jobs or opportunity mm. um, so I think that people are looking to kind of capture this essence of like going out and traveling and having adventures on a scale that is manageable. Yeah. Not everybody can just throw their life away and move into a backpack and travel around the world for two years. Some people want to do van life on the weekends. Some people want to spend six months road tripping around the country, you know, um, and like all things, uh, you know, it's just about giving people permission to do what they really want to do and this has become an, a popular option you know i think i think we can say definitely because of instagram like thanks to the power of social media and like people's ability to capture beautiful moments i think it's really 
um, kept the trend alive. Um, and I think with it getting more popular, there's a lot of different types of people getting involved. I mean, I know people who live in their vans who spent $200,000 on their van mm -hmm. build. And those are not, like, that's not everybody. Not everybody can do that. Um, but I, you know, my van was, I think, 16 grand total. So, I mean, and then I have good friends who actually uh, live in their vans and spend about $500 on their yeah. van. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, there's a huge diversity in, like, socioeconomic factors as far as, like, how vans are built out and how people do it so. so the instagram thing is interesting that's how i feel like i keep tabs on you like i'll yeah. see you in santa cruz one day and then the next day you're like i'm in moab like yeah. <laughs> doing your thing you know so we kind of watch you from afar um but with social media and with your videos and your platform you've been able to turn this into your job or you have this platform and i feel like what drives that is your spirit of generosity. Like that was a huge thing to do that time-lapse project that took a long time, mm -hmm. obviously a big commitment. And I think also the, when I look at the way you do social media and are building your platform, I really admire the authenticity behind it. And I know that's part of what, what you're doing too, like living a life as you and doing your life and your work as you. Do mm -hmm. you wanna talk to that at all? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, social media doesn't lend itself the, the way people do social media a lot, I think, doesn't lend itself to feel very authentic. Um, I mean, I know if I scroll through my feed, I'll see people being like, I'm doing this great thing today. What are you doing today? And, you know, you 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 look at it and you're like, oh, please stop. Like, you know, and so um, my desire to just be a real person um, and like communicate what is important to me to people out there is is like, you know, that is important to me. But also, um, in the early stages of doing the van thing, in, in regards to your earlier question, people were urging me to sell the content that I was creating, you know, make classes, sell it to people. And it felt kind of weird for me to want to do that because like my goal was to show it that anyone can build out a van for cheap and have it be nice. Um, and that's still my goal is to show people that, you know, anyone can do this. It's not just me. And so selling it and charging people felt like, no, only the rich can do this. Only people with money can do this. Um, and so I guess I really just tried to emphasize that it is like, you know, do it yourself. You're going to have to do things that make you uncomfortable. You're going to have to mess up a little bit. Um, and then be authentic, be a good person. You know, that's kind of like where I'm trying to go. And also I'm really trying to focus on like female empowerment, you know, like women can do this too. Um, and there are a lot of female van lifers out there, like solo female van lifers. And I didn't uh, see that when I was doing my research, you know, initially I didn't see any. And then when I went out into the world, I saw a bunch. So, yeah, I see yeah. that. You're not alone out there, like just from your images and video yeah. and stuff. Um, so let's dip into what is the, what's your favorite thing about being on the road in your van mm -hmm. and what is the hardest what's the most challenging thing um well I'll start with the most challenging the most challenging thing is being sick mm. it really sucks to be sick um yeah it's just hard when you're trying to take care of yourself in a small space and you don't necessarily have access to facilities um I recently had like a really bad stomach flu <laughs> <laughs> for a couple weeks and that was really challenging and and you know if you are sick in a van I would recommend getting out of a city going out uh, into more rural areas because you have more freedom to be alone and have your own privacy in a city you're really like cooped up um, and that's really hard or go to a friend's house yeah. um, that is the most preferable <laughs> method it's good to have a friend's yeah. house on in the, in the side it really is you know you, you, you can't do van life with no community you need to have friends I love that um, and, you know, my favorite thing about living in a van is probably, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's like the freedom mm -hmm. aspect of it. Um, being able to pick up and go whenever I need to. Having a friend call me across the country and say, hey, I'm having a birthday party. We're going to go to a hot spring and then go rock climbing afterwards. Do you want to come? And I'll be like, yeah, I got nowhere to be. Let's do it. Mm. <laughs> So, um, yeah, definitely the freedom. Nice. You said something earlier about sustainable freedom that I think is 
Mm. Um, it's a really cool concept. It's like it kind of gets at the notion of like how much do we need? If we can live mm -hmm. a life that we want and do what we, we want to do, what makes us happy, have community, have connections, and can sustain that, um, do we need to be hoarding money and hoarding lots of things and, and all that? I'd love to hear more about that sustainable freedom. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that the concepts of like minimalism and self-reliance and... Um, community building are all really essential to having a sustainable existence mm -hmm. on the road. Um, I think there's this misconception of this kind of like Jack Kerouac-esque um, adventure where you just throw everything away and you live in a rucksack and you just kind of pave your own way solo all across the country um, that people have when they start traveling and they're like, I'm going to be alone. And I, th I, that is actually the number one thing people talk to me about is like, I don't want to be alone. I'm afraid of being alone. And like people are not designed for solitude. Yeah. I have, I had that fear early on and it is so funny how bad at being alone we are, you know, like we're not like, we can't do it. Like I'll sit around at the, like a, a camp, a camp site in a national park and just sit there and, you know, make food or something. And people next to me want to say, Hey, or contribute, <laughs> you know, like, we're not good at not communicating and being in community. And so um, as far as the sustainable freedom part goes, um, yeah, I mean, I think that the hardest thing about it is really just finding a sustainable method of um, money. And that's another thing people ask me about all the time. It's like, how do you make money? How does, how does anyone do this? But I think with the internet, things are changing. You can work remotely. I know a lot of people who have Silicon Valley jobs and tech company jobs and live in their vans and work remotely, cool. you know? So, I mean, it is feasible to do. Cool. What else do you want people to know about you and your work before we jump off? Um, I can't distill it down into one thing. I have so many things. <laughs> okay, then where can people find you? Let's let's have all the handles. Um, okay, so I am on Facebook and Instagram uh, at One Chick Travels. My website is onechicktravels.com. I just launched a Patreon, uh, which is I'm trying to transform or um, what's the word? Transition my income stream from social media marketing to uh, full time blogging and making videos. Uh, and so I just launched a Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com slash one chick travels and that's like a monthly subscription service where people can support creators like me uh, on a monthly basis for very small commitments you know if you think the work that I do is as good as a cup of coffee or like a bag of peanut M&Ms uh, you can support me in that way um, I think that's everything oh Twitter I'm at Kaya says okay. but I don't tweet very often so well thank you so much Kaya it's yeah. been fun chatting yeah thanks All right. me on. Yep, for sure <laughs> All right, Kat Johnson signing off. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you want to see more, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We would really appreciate it. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications, because then if you do, you'll be the first one to actually see our video. And lastly, again, if you like the video, why don't you like the video, okay? Thank you very much.